Hello. Hey, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Which is also Vlog Girl Day 14. The time is flying. Or, or how about Vloguary? Or Vloguary. You said Vlogmas yesterday, now you're on Vlog Girl. Hey. Vlog Girl. I'm a time That's... traveler. <laughs> I'm a time traveler, baby. That's right. Denise made this lovely um, egg and cheese toast for breakfast, which is probably one of my favorite breakfasts with a great cup of coffee and I caught up on some YouTube videos. Now I think we're going to shoot an Instagram shot with my purse changeover. I try to change my purse every week so that none of my purses feel left out and so I can justify the amount of money I spend on purses. We're just talking about our dreams for when we're out of here um, because boy oh boy we can't wait! And it's really 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 cold. If you look outside, even just show them outside, you know how like when it's cold, even the, the steam and fog looks a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as cold as yesterday yet. It start, it's starting. I'll say hello. Hello. It's starting to warm up a little bit. It's uh, minus 19 right now instead of minus 30. Um, so that's good. I have to take the dogs out. They've been out twice already before noon. And they've been driven up to the park twice. Uh, Pearl didn't go the second time. She tapped out on that, so I take her out down here by herself. Um, and she just quickly does her business and runs back in. So, poor things. Yes, and just the other day, I, when I was editing the vlog last night, I noticed Denise started to tell you something, but then she forgot where she was. Oh, did I? Uh, yeah, so the reason she's concerned with the salt on the ice is if you do a little test, I got my liners in, so it's hard to say test. <laughs> um, if you take a, some ice, like an ice cube out of your freezer and put some rock salt on it and hold it against the skin of your hand, you'll find you can't hold it there very long because it hurts like a mother. Burns. And uh, yeah, she started to, to tell you that and then she got off on something else and didn't come back. That's why she's very careful in the winter and that's why when you see morons who are running with their dogs on city sidewalks in the winter with the dog leash tied around their waist and you see the dog trying to keep up and it's running and trying to lift a paw, it's because the salt on the ice cold pavement is burning the pads of their paws. And mommy doesn't know or doesn't care, I guess, so... Um, or daddy. Yeah, or daddy. Which, anyway, running that way with your dog is shitty because that's not the way a dog runs naturally. naturally in a straight line at an even pace. That's not how they do it. But when you're tied by the neck to something, you don't really have much of a freaking choice, do you? Mm. Anyway, I'm always so proud of our dogs, and it's through none of my own. It's all Denise. Even when we went to the vet um, last time when we were home in Halifax, uh, it was a new clinic, and it was incredible that um, the vet listened to their heart and then handed the stethoscope to the other techs that were there and said, listen to their heart, listen to their resting heart rate. And they were all freaking out because it was the best resting heart rate they had ever heard on a dog, and that's all Denise. Because Denise brings those dogs out four or five times a day and they get a good run, like sprinting run, uh, off a leash, on grass, the way dogs are supposed to be. And as a result, we have extremely, extremely healthy dogs. Now, if she could do that with me, <laughs> we'd be all set! <laughs> it's just a matter of time, folks. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. From our house to yours. <laughs> I'm telekinetic, people. Uh, perch, in, perch, perch changeover, purse changeover day. Yes, I am switching over to my Louis. Um, this is the only Louis Vuitton that I have. It's a speedy mini. Here's my problem with this purse is the opening is not big enough. I would never buy another speedy mini ever again because the opening is just not big enough. But I am trying to show all my purses love, so. Switch over is happening. Look at the difference in size between oh, like. Michael Kors and Speedy. There's also a serious difference in weight. Oh. This thing oh my is so heavy when it's empty, it's crazy. Look at this cosmetic bag. This is one of my favorite cosmetic bags. It has MAC in the uh, graffiti. And then when you open it up, the inside is this cool. Oh, yeah. And I have another cosmetic bag where the outside is this. And the inside is this. It came out Mac a few years ago. Hey, you guys want to see what I carry in my cosmetic case? Absolutely. All right. Um, I've got two powders. These were limited edition by Estee Lauder. Look how beautiful. 
Um, I'm a Sagittarius, so that's my my sign. And they're like the old school compacts. They're very, very small. And it is refillable. And you can see it says here, SJ Lauder 2013 and Sagittarius. And I can replace the pan. It's a cute little... I always keep my pad um, face up. I don't know if you guys know that little trick. When you uh, blot your face, oil from your face gets on this. And if you leave it face down in the pan, it will give you that little shiny hardness that sometimes develops on powder. But if you just keep it face up like that, you'll avoid that problem. So that's one. And that is really heavy. I keep them in that little pouch. And I have another one. Because I couldn't decide between the two, so I bought both. This one is really cute too. And it has my birthstone turquoise right there. And that when you press the button and it opens and same thing. So I carry those in there. I have a lipstick in here. This is my favorite nude. It's Hourglass Grace. And it's almost gone. That's all I've got left of it. But that is a really nice nude. I have antibacterial this is pink grapefruit from uh, the body shop and this unlike most antibacterials including Bath and Body Works has no uh, triclosan in it so I like having that with me I have um, some wet ones antibacterials you know you guys know me and my wet ones so I just have some of those in there I have a little mini tweezer man tweezers because especially when you hit your 40s, gals, you never know when you're going to notice that, oh, you got a big black hair on your chin. Uh, there's my Beach Babe from Tone It Up SPF Lip Balm in Pineapple. This is lovely. No matter what color lipstick you're wearing, you can just freshen your lips up with this. It's Lip Glow uh, Color Review Balm by Dior. And it's one of these ones that just looks like a clear balm. But it does put a little bit of a pink hue. You know how sometimes if you're wearing long wear lipstick, your lips will get really dry and gross? You can just put this right over the lipstick and it fancies you up. I have a tiny hand cream. I always keep a tiny hand cream in there. Now you see from the heat of my hand, it's starting to show a tiny little bit of pink. You'll see it. Uh, these are beat up. They've been in there for so long, but they're Bosha Green Tea Blotting Linens. And I just love, before I put powder on my face through the day, I like to make sure I take as much oil off. As I can. I, I always have some version of this in my purse. It's lip balm, sugar, uh, fresh sugar lip balm, but this is in rose, so it has a really nice tint to it. When I'm on airplanes, I like to keep my lips moisturized, but you don't want to put lipstick on, but this keeps me looking put together because it has a nice, that has a pale color. And then I have a sample size one um, that has a lot more color. This is the cherry. I have these in every color they come in. I love them so much. Look at look at the cherry. Like as much color as a lipstick, except so easy to wear because it's balm. And then I always have some placards in here. These are great for getting uh, things out from between your teeth in a subtle and discreet way. Instead of having a big piece of floss which is flinging across the aisle, you can be discreet there. I always keep a hair tie. Because if you have long hair, you know what it's like when you want to get it on your face and can't. This is a sample size that I have to, have to, have to get a full size of. This is that Lip Tint in Oil by Yves Saint Laurent. And I have not met a lip product I love as much as this in a long time. It's an oil, but it basically does leave a really pretty tint. And boy, does it feel fantastic on the lips. Generally, in my bag, I keep things that I can easily put on. And finally... One of my favorite products that I just got a few months ago, maybe a, yeah, two months ago, I guess. It's the Blotterazzi by Beauty Blender, and this is a new blotting tool. It's made with the same material that they make the Beauty Blender with, and you use it dry to just blot your makeup. You can see I got a bit of makeup there. And then there's this plastic thing in here to protect the clean one, which you have underneath air gets in through there and then you can just clean them and reuse dry them and reuse them and it has a really good quality mirror that is what i keep in my cosmetics bag in my purse i am making a little lunch for us for valentine's day here is my mirepoix 
which of course is just celery, carrot, and onion, the start and basis to any delicious meal. Now I have a story for you. I was just checking comments of our last videos and one of you, Warm Wishes, mentioned how you got such a scare when you saw Denise with that big red parka hanging behind her on the door and you thought that someone was standing right behind her and you got a scare. It reminded me of a funny story, which I want to tell you now. I was a real mama and daddy's girl. I never had a babysitter. I was never home alone. They have my baby teeth in a shot glass when I was a kid. They have the bracelet that I was born in the hospital. You know, that first hospital bracelet, they put everything. Very coddled. As a result, I was never home alone. Every day when I came home from school, first of all, my father owned a Harley Davidson dealership, which was right in our yard. So when I walked up the hill, daddy and my brothers were in the yard and in the house there was mommy with my after school snack. So never, never, never alone. So when I was about, I guess 13, 12, 13, um, my parents started taking dance lessons and started going to the Golden Age Club on Friday night. Uh, they had never really been social people before and they were in their 60s and they started doing this, which my mother loves. She got to, you know, get a couple of pretty dresses from Sears catalog and, and go out to dances, which she often refers to as um, her most enjoyable time of her marriage was from 60, the age of 60 to 69. Well, when they started doing that, I was still too chicken shit to be home alone. But where my parents live, where my father bought land, my brothers built their houses on either side of the house. So my brother Billy was right next door, and I used to head over to Billy's when Mommy and Daddy went to the dance. Now, most people at that age were already home alone. So picture it. It's a summer night. It's still bright daylight. You know how late it gets dark in the summer. It's like 8 o'clock, and my parents are leaving for the dance, and I'm in a panic because I wanted to get in my nightgown before I went over to Billy's. And they said, well, just get in your nightgown and then go over after they left, which meant being alone in the house in the broad daylight for like 10 minutes while I changed into my nightie at eight o'clock at night on a Friday night. So they left, I tried to play it cool, but in reality, I was scared shitless. I just couldn't wait to get out of the house and get over to Billy's. So I'm in my bedroom and in my bedroom, my high school bedroom, my parents let me do whatever I wanted. We had driven across Canada. And do you remember pendants, those felt triangular pendants? I had bought one of those in every little place all across Canada. And I had them all hanging down from the ceiling. Plus my sister had done her honeymoon in Europe. She got me a whole bunch from there. Like I just had them everywhere, just packed. Stuff stuck all over my mirror, everything was packed. So there was just a little place in the mirror where I could see. So as I'm getting changed, as I'm pulling my shirt off, I happen to be standing in front of that mirror. And I had my shirt in such a way that it was holding my, my arm up. So like I wasn't physically holding my arm up, the shirt had put it there. So I didn't really have a sense of it being there. And as I'm getting, taking the shirt off, I look in the mirror. And when I looked in the mirror, I saw a hand coming over my head. And I freaked out and attacked it. And it was my own hand. It was so funny because I screamed, just like grabbed with all my might at the hand and like almost broke my own arm. So I got to have a good laugh, quickly put my nightgown on, head over to Billy's. And it took me, I'd say, I don't know, a good two months before I told anybody this story because I was so embarrassed of being scared of being home alone. But when you are a coddled, well-loved, well-protected, uh, snuggled up to everyday kid, alone took a little bit of time getting used to. So anyway... When you, Warm Wishes, made that comment about getting the scare with the parka, it reminded me of that story. So I just wanted to share it. Now, back to my Valentine lunch. I'm just replying to some comments. And uh, Diva of DST Nemo, uh, you mentioned that you were looking forward to hearing more of what I thought about Coldplay. I thought it was a horrible decision to combine... Coldplay with Beyonce and Bruno Mars. If you love Coldplay, no disrespect. I I will put my bias out there. I do not enjoy Coldplay. Um, I liken them to Air Supply. It's just not my style of music. However, I know there's lots of people that do love Coldplay, and that's fine and well and good. But if you watch that halftime show, it did not. It was not cohesive. It did not match, particularly when. At the end, when the three of them were together, because Bruno and Beyonce, like, were at the same level where 
like he just looked like he came off his couch in what he was wearing, which is all right if all the other people also look like that. I think that would have suited. You could have even had like, I'm not even saying you need that style of music. You could have had like a Mick Jagger and Mick always is in, um, you know, gives you like some kind of a silk shirt and he would have still fit in. I just didn't think it was good together. And a couple people jumped on me on Facebook uh, because I said, no, I love Coldplay. I have to disagree. You can love Coldplay all you want. Um, a guy I know from Halifax, Peter White, he's a comedian. He One of my favorite jokes he does, I think, is like so perfect for this. And um, the joke that he tells is that he argues with his mother about the fact that he doesn't like peanut butter and jam. And his mother's like, how can you not? You love peanut butter and you love jam. Uh, so how can you not like peanut butter and jam? And he says, this is like so genius. He says, yeah, well, I love grandma and I love porn too, but doesn't mean I like them together. So <laughs> I think Peter White summed that up perfectly because you can like Coldplay and like Bruno Mars and like Beyonce, but not together. It just didn't, to me, it didn't work. And this being the 50th um, Super Bowl, if you go back and look at the production quality last year, you look at Madonna's halftime show, you look at Beyonce's halftime show, um, everybody's, Michael Jackson's, I mean, everybody all the way back. I just don't feel that this halftime show was very cohesive at all. So there, that's uh, Diva of DST Nemo that I just wanted to put that out there for you. And uh, now back to our regular, regularly scheduled programming of watching scandal and replying to your comments. Hey everybody, so I know I'm doing a lot of talking to the camera today and sorry there'll be more action this week but there's just a couple of things I wanted to chat about and as I said I'm answering comments today which I haven't had a chance to do all week and I just want to talk again about the Super Bowl for a second. Um, you all know that I want to make my community, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or Twitter or anywhere else, a positive community. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't disagree about things. We totally can, i.e. Coldplay, yeah. Some of you are going to love what that Super Bowl show was, and that's fine. What I do not like, and you will find that I will remove comments, is if you slag people. So... You know, like you can, so in other words, you could disagree with me or disagree with what a celebrity does on TV without calling them a bitch um, or anything else like that. So I know a couple of you made comments about Beyonce and what she did in the Super Bowl, and they were negative comments. <clears throat> and it's not, um, it's not that I don't think you have your right to your opinion. You totally do, but I, I don't want, I don't want to hear you calling her a bitch. Do you know what I mean? Any more than like. If you recall when I did my perfume collection, um, I have a number of Britney Spears perfumes, and I said to y'all, I don't, I, I've never bought a, a Britney Spears record. I never listened to Britney Spears music, but nonetheless, <clears throat> do not slag her in the comments below because my page is not about negativity, and it's certainly not about tearing other women down, no matter who they are. Now, let me just talk about what Beyonce did for one second. I was super proud and super happy when I saw her come out, um, and I saw that homage to the Black Panthers. Now, I've heard some people say, oh, she, she's encouraging people to shoot police. Now, if you read the lyrics to Formation, there's nothing in that entire song that is about that. If people are thinking she's encouraging people to shoot police because of the altercations that took place between the police and the Black Panthers back in the day, um, you have to stop and think about the number of black people who get shot by the police every year, not just in America, here in Canada as well. In fact, the very city that I live in has had a bad history of police shooting black people here, particularly black men. Um, and as an Aboriginal person, I, I understand the pain that that causes. And I'm really proud that someone who has the kind of power and the kind of voice she has. I make a YouTube channel that reaches 5,000 people. You know, I have a television show reach reaches a little bit more than that, but just within Canada. She's an international superstar. She knows what a risk it would have been paying homage back to the Black, Black Panther movement. And I think it was brave and incredible for her to do it. Speaking on the Black Panthers specifically, I know there's a lot of people may not have agreed with their tactics. There was another movement back then called the American Indian Movement. Uh, most famously, they occupied Wounded Knee, um, which was the site 
of a place where American soldiers had killed 300 mostly women and native women and children. Um, and AIM also did things, AIM is what they were called for short, that I also didn't agree about, didn't agree with. However, their presence and what they did was in response to a great level of frustration and powerlessness among a group of people being oppressed. And they affected change. No, I don't agree with all their tactics, but the fact that they were meant that the world changed for the better. Um, and I think what Beyonce did, you know, if you think about um, Mr. Carmichael, who was a prolific writer and speaker who came out of that Black Panthers movement, Angela Davis, a number of other people who I think have uh, had a positive impact on issues of color and particularly issues of women and color. So what Beyonce did in coming out and paying that homage I think was really important. It was really powerful. Um, I understood it. I understood it on a deep personal level. And please understand that when people do that, it's not an anti-white thing. Um, my mother is white, obviously. My wife is white. I love white people. But it's the acknowledgement of an, a part of our history and an issue that we're still dealing with in a very bad way today. So anyway, sorry for that long rant. I just wanted to explain if a couple of you noticed that um, your comments are gone. I hope that you will still watch my channel. I hope that we can find a way to, you know, to talk about this. Some of you uh, expressed that you didn't like what Beyonce did, but you did it in a way that was respectful. You didn't uh, slag her as an individual because none of us know Beyonce personally. We don't know who she is as a person. Um, so I hope you'll respect that. I just don't want my my online presence to in any way be negative. Um, but I do encourage open and honest exchange of ideas and conversation and disagreement, but always from a place of respect. So hope you understand. Sorry enough with the rambling. I will, I will uh, make sure that when I come back, it'll be something fun and light, but I just wanted to address it. Look, Honey Bear went out after we had our lunch and a truly long stem rose. You never see really long stem roses anymore. You don't. But this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Almost as beautiful as my beautiful wife. Yeah. Thank you. All right, folks. We're going to call it a night on this fine Valentine's Sunday. Good night. <laughs> You look crazy. I am. Baby, when am I going to cut your hair? I don't know.